Hi folks, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima. And first of all, I'd like to wish that you all are healthy and doing well in this time that we are facing. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so in order to receive further notification. And in, th in this video, we'll be talking about the Git uh, structure and the Git theory. Uh, and in the next videos, I'll be talking about how you can actually use it and set up your machine. So Git was created by Linus Torvalds. It's the same creator of uh, the Linux kernel. Uh, there is a story that he created the Git because he didn't like anything that was in the market. But I took a look in the in the web, and it looks like he created because uh, there was some, he already used one that I don't remember the name, but there was some licensing, license uh, problems of, or thing, and then he decided to create it. He does not maintain anymore though. All right, so Git uses a Git tree structure, right? And you have a master branch, and you have other branches. And in this case, you have eight branches in total nine with the master branch right first of all i would like to say that the master branch name the master is an actual uh, uh pattern standard in the industry you can call anything anything you like but the pattern is to use master as the main branch and that's the one that's going to be your release candidate to production so you if you have a continuous integration strategy all other branches can be merged to master and master is the one that's going to go ahead and is going to be the one that can be go can can go to production technically any branch could go to production but master is the one that is a standard but this is the actual structure of the git it's not in an actual tree but more like this structure and every little uh, white circle is a commit so going to a drawing that's more likely that's going to find a web on the web or in any other uh, UI that you can use Git with, uh, you're going to have a master branch and you're going to have a commit A. Then you're going to have a commit B. And inside a commit, you have a hash, which is a number, uh, which is a string a little bit uh, bigger than that one. You're going to have the author of that, that commit. You're going to have a date time of that commit, you're going to have a description that the author gave. You're going to have a, the files that was that that was were changed, and the actual details of each change. And going back here to my drawing, you're going to have now you're going to have a third commit, and you're going to have the head of the branch. So the head is always going to be the last commit, and you can address the last commit as the head. I'm going to create a branch red from my master branch head. And note that when I do this, the content on the first commit of this branch is going to be the exactly same content of the commit that I created a branch from. And now I'm going to have other commits on top of that. And also I'm going to have the head. So now I have the head of a master branch and I have the head of the branch red. Of course, the branch, the master branch can can keep uh, evolving without uh, independently from the from the branch red, and I can create a new branch from the head from master. Now I have three branches, and each branch has their own head. And also, I can create a new branch from the branch from another branch, and and. Note that I didn't create the branch purple from the head of the red branch. I created the branch purple from another commit inside the branch red. I can I can select that specific branch, uh, sorry, commit, and create a and create a branch from any commit that I would like. So note that the content on the branch purple is the actual content on this commit here that I created from. And of course. The master branch is going to keep uh, evolving independently from others, and all others now are independent. Right? Of course, and, and, and I said that the master branch is the one that's going to be a release candidate to production. 
right? But now I'm happy with the content on the Blue Branch, and I would like for that content to also be able to go to production. So what do I do? I, I do a merge, and I do a merge from the Blue Branch to Blue Branch to the Master Branch. Of course, this merge can generate conflicts, uh, but Git is going to tell you if it, the conflict could be generated if we create uh, we change the same file, of course. Uh, and Git is going to tell you that there is a there was a conflict. Which content do you want? Do you want this content? Do you want this other content? Or do you actually want to select and change and do your own uh, Frankenstein and in, 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 in mix them? Right, and it's up to you. And my branch purple, I'm also happy with the content of my branch purple, and I also decided to do a merge on that branch purple. Right, but please note one thing: when I do the merge, I'm not getting all the content here and putting in this commit. I'm getting the content on this last commit and put in here, right? So for example, if I have a branch, if I have a file with a content letter A here, and then I created a new commit and that commit, I changed the letter A to letter B. And in the next commit, I change it from letter B to letter C, right? When I do a merge, I only going to have uh, uh, the content here is going to be the brain, the letter C. That's the one that's going to come here, right? It's not going to be the content of A, B, and C. It's, the, it's only going to go coming and become C. Of course, that I'm going to have access to all the changes, all the commits that I did. But the one that's going to be the con the actual content is the the content of the B. Oh, sorry, of the C, the last one. Awesome. So, and the branch red is going to be here. I didn't merge. I can keep uh, changing it. I can delete it. I can do whatever. Right? And now I'm going to talk a little bit about how is the actual use of Git in theory still, but how, what, when you're doing your changes locally, what you can do and how that works when you are changing uh, locally and then you want to push to the repository. So I have a remote repository on GitHub. It could be in any other uh, repository, GitLab or Bitbucket, but uh, here I'm using GitHub as an example. I have a remote repository, right? And I would like to get that re remote remote repository. So I do a git pull, either to update whatever I already have on my computer, or I do a git clone if I'm doing it for the first time. If I'm also doing for the first time, I can do a git init and I can set it up from there, but I didn't put it here as an example. Git clone is easier. So I did my git clone. I got my local repository here. And now I, I did some changes, right? And I would like to, I, I changed some code, I changed some content, and I would like to add to my local repository. So what do I do? I do a git add. So I do a git add on, I can do a git add all which is going to uh, change with it's going to add to the staging area or index everything that I changed. I can do a git add on a specific file. It can be on a new file or it could be on a change that I did and I do a git add on that specific file. It's going to add everything that was changed in that file or I can select to add the specific change changes in a file. So let's say I have a change A, B, and C. I can select, I would like to add the A and I would like to add the C, but I do not want to add the B right now. So every change that you did, you have control of what's going to be going to stage. Right? When you do when you do git status, it's going to sh it's going to show your staging area in your local uh, computer. And once you are okay with your staging, you create a git commit. And the git commit is going to have all the changes that were in staging, right? And remember that the git commit was the one that I show you that's going to have the description, the timestamp, the, all the files that was changed and, and all the content that came from the staging. So your git commit, it's a conjunction of all the changes that you did and that you added whatever you wanted to add in the staging, and now it became a commit. So 
the local repository is going to that commit is going to go into a lo local repository and it's going to go on on your git tree locally right so when we did a git clone you downloaded the tree to your local repository and the git commit is adding on top of that tree right you have control of that tree locally too so you can do as many commit as you like and you can select each commit independently, right? So you can select one commit and then go back to the previous one and then go back to the head. You can do whatever you want to do on that tree, right? But remember that that's only a local repository. If your computer, computer gets damaged, stolen, or whatever, you're going to lose all that content, right? And for you not to lose it or to share with your team, you do a git push to the remote repository. So the git push, push is going to get all your local commits, all the commits that you have doesn't need to be only one. It can be as many commits as you'd like. Whatever is on your local that is that, that, that haven't been in the repository yet is going to push all that changes to the, repos to the remote repository. Bear in mind that once you do that, any change that you do on that tree is going to get recorded. And what I mean by that, you can, you still can revert a commit. You can still do any change that you like. But once you push to the remote repository and you do a revert, it's going to be there saying that Raphael reverted a commit. I can do that on my local too, right? I can revert a commit. But also, if I'm on my local and I haven't pushed to the repository that commit yet, I can delete that commit completely. I, I don't even have to revert it. I can just say, I don't want this commit anymore Remove, and it's going to be gone. Nobody's going to know that I ever created that commit or that change. That's going to be deleted forever, right? If you, if you did a change on your repository and it's already on your remote repo, then it's going to be uh, historical data that you did some changes, right? So to sum it up, we just talk about the very basic of how you use Git. I hadn't discussed anything related to merging, uh, resolving conflicts, and any of the fancy stuff that you can do, just basic Git. But then in the next videos, I'm going to go over the details of how you can use those commands, how you can create these structure that I'm, that I'm talking about, how can you use these commands and create that structure in the, in the, in the, in the tree structure. And I'm also going to show you how to set up your computer to use the GitHub repository, right? So thank you for watching. Again, be safe. And if you like the videos, please give us a th thumbs up and uh, subscribe for you to get the, the following notifications. Thank you very much.